This project is a mosaic portrait created on Google Draw. Um, and it's super fun and it's not difficult to do. Uh, what you'll do is select a photograph and it has to be a photograph of someone. It can be yourself, it can be a friend. Um, and we're gonna put that on the computer and then do some drawing over top of it. So um, I just wanted to show you these examples first. Uh, some of these are more successful than others. I can, would like to point out, like in this one, the shapes on the face and on the clothing, the shapes and the size of the shapes are very consistent. Um, where this one, the face shapes are very small and then the hair gets bigger and the gaps between the shapes are very large here. So I think this is less successful um, than this one. This one's good. This one has a lot of um, big gaps between their shapes too. Um, and not a lot of care is taken for the face shapes. So I would say this is a weaker example um, as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you get into your Google Drive and you click New, More, Google Drawings. Okay, so now you have a blank page and what you need to do next, well, you can title it. So, and then we're gonna insert an image. Actually, before we do that, we are going to cover the background with a solid color and to do that, so we, this checkerboard you see means it's nothing, it's invisible. So we're gonna draw a rectangle over the background and it will default to blue for some reason. Um, I want you to fill it with black. You can decide later if perhaps you'd like to change that to a different color, but for now we're just gonna do black. Then you're going to insert the photograph that you've chosen. Again, it has to be a photograph. It cannot be uh, clip art and it cannot be say an anime character or something that is not a photograph. So it has to be a photo. Uh, the other thing is um, you want it to be a decent quality picture. Okay, so we can crop later. I'm not worried that my picture is very vertical and my background's horizontal. We'll crop later. Um, so now the drawing begins. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, that's command option plus command option minus is just a quick way. So I kind of like that. Um, okay, right here where you have your line tool, you click the drop down arrow. We want to go to polyline. And this is going to allow us to draw. And you're going to click each time you change direction. So I would go click. Click, uh, click. Okay, now I want to match my colors best I can um, to my real photograph. So I'm gonna get this open. I'm gonna see, like, it's kind of a weird picture. Her hair's brown, but it looks kind of bluish, but I'm gonna kind of go with what it looks like. So, oh so weird but yeah I think that's kind of it and you have to get the the line off of it so it's now trans a transparent shape see um if I thought you know that's really not the best color I'm gonna go in here and maybe try to get it a little more a better match you can do that so maybe I go with that one I don't know Actually, the blue one's better. I did command Z to undo it. Okay, so now I'm gonna keep drawing shapes. Now remember, you want to keep your shapes kind of a consistent size and also 
you have to you want to leave gaps between your shapes I unfortunately that's not the right one clicked out of it so I lost my color there it is so once I pick my color and take off the line and while it has this plus cursor if I don't click out of it like I did with any of these it'll stay that color while I'm using it so I'm going to keep clicking trying to keep a similar spacing between my shapes let me see if I can zoom in so that's not too bad and it doesn't have to always be a triangle but we do want straight lines So we're just going to build with geometric shapes to try to get the same look as your photograph, but with little tiles. Think of them as little mosaic tiles. And see how the hair gets darker here? I'm going to probably uh, fix that. So, so let's see what we've got so far. Let me zoom out. Okay, so one thing you can do is you can either delete your picture and then undo that, but if you're worried about that, you can go arrange, order, send backward, which is also command arrow up and command arrow back. And now I can kind of see what it looks like. So I can go command arrow up, command arrow back to kind of get a look at it. I think that I would like to... fill in this area with that color and then and some of these up here and then I'm going to get some different shades. You can get real particular if you want like this part of her hair is a little lighter than here so I could make shapes one color here and another there. It's up to you but you get the idea. So I'm going to do some more um, while we're at it. I think I'm going to pick up these light pieces I know these shapes are a little bit smaller. This is a lighter piece. Oops. Okay, I now that I've been going through here, I've tried to pick up these highlights. So once you get a color that you've chosen, it's great to keep doing with that color because you don't have to select it again. And once I've started going around, I realized the very first piece I did is just too big. So I'm going to go up here and get the arrow select tool, and I'm going to get rid of that one. That was just too big. So now that I've removed that one, this is a lot more consistent and uniform in size. These, these may be a little bit large, um, but they're not terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and try to come back and get some more of these shapes but make smaller ones. So I have to find my color again, which is another good reason to not mix. Now I need to get a darker blue, so I start with a blue that I already have and drag it, um, the color picker, to try something and click OK. And uh, that will add it then always to my swatches so I can get it again easily.
So this part so far took about 45 minutes for the hair. Um, and I still have to do the face clothes and the background is an option for you depending on your picture. Um, so you just keep on drawing your shapes. Try to be somewhat consistent in size and the gaps. And when you're done, you can change the background color, which we'll call grout, like grout between tiles color that you want so that you can decide later. You can even try different colors. Like I could, let's see, let's go with complement complementary color so that's you know would really make it pop um of course everything's not going to be blue you can go with something kind of monochromatic harmonious it's up to you when you're all done you can try a couple that's kind of cool so you can decide when you're done I know that some shapes are just going to have to be smaller, but you don't want to do like the one I showed you that had um, the face all small and the hair all big. That we don't want. So I want to uh, make sure you understand that you're really, really going to try to just match the colors in your photograph. Um, what you're seeing here, I'm actually going to change some of those up by the eyelashes on to the left. I don't want it to be the same color. I, I think I have the wrong color there, but I grabbed a deep purple for what I'm doing right now. That seems kind of weird. You, you might just think, oh, I'll just get black. But if the picture looks purple, get a deep purple. It'll make it look more realistic later. In a minute, you're gonna see me do the eyeball, the whites of the eyes. I don't get white. It ends up being like a minty green when I finally match it. So really try to match your colors. It really helps your eyes to look realistic and gives it a really neat um, quality if you add the reflection highlights to your eye that you see in the picture. So anytime you have a portrait and you're working on eyes, make sure you get that shine in there. So it may seem overwhelming to draw an eye out of shapes. But if you forget that you're drawing an eye and you just trace what's behind it, it will really help you. Um, you'll see here, I just start seeing these lighter shapes. And so I found a, I thought it looked like a really pale kind of purple. And I made the shapes that color. It's what's really in between the eyelashes is what I'm guessing. Um, so you're just kind of making shapes based on what you see. Don't think, oh, this is weird because these should be an eyelid with eyelashes. Just draw what you see and it'll make your life a lot easier. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and just trace the shapes and fill it with the best match or match the color that you've decided to use. 
I decided I didn't like this color, so I'm grouping them all together by holding down my shift key. And I'm going to tweak the color just a little. That's a better match. Now these ones that are not part of the iris, they should be darker, um, a different color. So I'm going to change those as well. Check your work often to see what it looks like without the photograph. Take a look at all the variation of color on the skin around the eye. There's a lot of highlights, shading. I'm going to try to match uh, colors here. You're going to see me go through a series of different shades. Um, but look at the finished product that I have shared with you and see how many different colors I have here. and see how that helps make it a little more uh, believable that it's an eye it's not just a flat drawing it's a got dimension to it Okay, when I back up, I know that this is going to be small because it's inside the eye, but this doesn't necessarily have to be that small. So I'm noticing an average size of these shapes, and these are about half the size. So I'm going to, it's good to, to keep an eye on some. I'm going to see if I can combine a couple of these. That's a little better. Okay, when you need to match a color, you know that it's not going to be one of the colors that are already there. One way to do it is to match to the closest thing you can find and then customize it. Sometimes that's easier. So you draw your shape. And this is kind of a yellowy, pinky, pale, beige-ish. And so... I'm looking at this thinking I'm going to maybe start with this. So it's going to fill it with that, but now I can customize it. So I click custom and now I can play with it. So I know that it's lighter and this gives me an idea. I think that's kind of getting there, isn't it? Uh, I don't know, I can try this. I wish this didn't get dark so you could see, but we can try it. So that's not too bad. I think I want it a little darker. So I'm going to click on it again. Click custom. Pull it straight down a little darker. That's better. So it's not perfect, but for this project, I think it'll be just fine. So, um, and especially over here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Actually, I think I'm going to use it here. And then maybe darken it a little bit back over here. Because it's a pretty good match over here. 
remember to pull out again so that you aren't making all of your shapes tiny you want to kind of get back to your shape size so you want to be careful not to have all your shapes going the same direction like that last one i did i think i don't want to do that i think i'm going to cut this one off here and go like this So now this one I'm going to not use because I'm going to darken it. But I want to go and see if I have any other places on the skin that are those light shades. And I do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab them. Actually, let me get rid of this guy. Well, this one is too dark for sure. We'll come back to that. So right now I'm just looking for light skin tone. So let me go back to my polyline shape. I lost my color because I clicked off of it, but it is in my custom, so I'm not super worried about it. So I can go like this. It was the last one I made. I'm kind of going along the lines in the forehead. Instead of going against it, I'm going to let the the flow of my shapes help me make this look like the person that it is. Again, trying to keep my shapes somewhat the same size as things I see other places. Without worrying about it too, too much, but we definitely don't want it to be all different. Here you can see the hairline does go a little lower than I made this, so I might just throw in one more shape. Let's see how it's looking. Oh, it's coming along. I think I'll switch the background to dark gray for now since I have some really dark darks. It just helps them pop out instead of getting lost being the same color as the background. So at this point, I am hour and a half in. Okay, so I just learned something that's a shortcut for you. If I am drawing a shape, let me just draw a shape over here. Okay, it's currently this purplish color. Let's say I want to make one of these. If I click on the arrow, click on one of the color I want, and then click on the polyline tool, the next shape I make will be the one I touched last with the select tool. So that's kind of handy. You don't have to go. I kept going up to look for it in my swatches, my color panel, but I don't need to do that. So right now I want to get this color. So I'm in my select tool. I'm going to click on this grayish color. And now that's what it'll be when I click on here to fill in these spaces. Okay, I have both eyes done and the hair, a little bit of the skin, and I'm at 2 hours and 11 minutes.
Well, this face mask is going to be interesting because it's so, the pattern is so tiny. This will be interesting. Okay, I think I'm getting a little more of the hang of it. First I was doing the actual shapes. Now I'm going to try to just build the pattern in the in the cloth without actually tracing it. It's also faster. <laughs> Okay, in the instance of having a pattern, I wish that I didn't have a pattern. I wish I had something solid. But it's a good thing for me to see because I think if you choose something that has a pattern, an option for you would be to leave the leave it um, the background of the pattern blank. And let me show you what would happen. Then the background of it becomes the same color as the um, this grout or background color that you selected so it kind of has a cool feel to it you don't have to put edges on it um, I think what I would do is if I do this and make the mask be a navy background with a pattern is I'm going to go in and see what I have here that are it's on the edges and get a little more of this uh, implied line so that's where you don't have a line drawn but I have objects that make your eye fill in the line I just don't have anything I think it kind of goes like this actually but I might put a little something on the edges so maybe I'll add one more color Let's see if there's any more of this color on there and um, go ahead and let the background be whatever my grout color is and I can again if I change my grout color so right now it's that one which I kind of like if I went solid black then the mask is black and if I go gray the mask is gray so it's kind of a cool vibe um, I will say that uh, let's see Here's the one I was looking for. So his shirt does not have a pattern on it. So this is what you would typically do if you don't have a pattern and that might guide you in what you select. But um, this is a lot easier than what I've been working on on the pattern of the mask, but it's kind of a cool feel. So I think that I will stick with this dark blue, which I kind of like. All right, so let me zoom in here and see. I've not done any of the greens. So there's this yellowy green and a mint green, light pink, lots of other colors. But I think if I get this gr light green added to it, that ought to do it. I am going to do something because I don't want to keep scrolling back and forth. I'm going to get a couple of my skin tone colors. So I'm holding down my shift key. I'm grabbing a couple of these, my light ones. These, these, these. I hit copy, paste, and I'm pulling them down here so that I have them handy. I'm going to delete them in a little bit, I'm gonna, but then I can just look at them. Okay, zoom in for the neck. Okay, remember I can click on one, then click my polyline and that should be the color I have. So, Okay. 
Okay, I have the clothes left and then I'm done. So I'm going to probably try to get a little bit of the variation in the shading. It's okay if you go off here because you're going to crop it later so you don't have to worry too much about it being real precise. I'm trying to hit all the light parts and then I'll come back with my medium colors and darks. Try to get at least three colors on this shirt since it's a solid piece of clothing. This is my lightest. Here's a medium. Actually I'm probably going to go with four colors because I need to get darker. So there you go. I think that you could um, play around with the backgrounds, make sure that you find something you like. So I like this one. You know, you can try other things. Okay, so now when you're finished, you are going to save it. File. Click File, Download scalable vector graphic next we're going to crop it we'll do this by taking a screenshot of just the part that you want to save So now you have a JPEG and a vector file of your mosaic. Um, I, I will have you turn in both to me. I hope you had fun.